I homeschooled other people's kids for about five years, late 90s, yeah. early 2000s. And, and similar to you in a sense of, of just, I was bringing kids to my place and then we'd go and explore yeah. the community. So the community was yeah. the primary learning yeah. resource, you know. Yeah. But part of that was, you know, uh, getting on the public buses and saying, okay, you know, mm-hmm. looking around, who's, who's on the bus today? <laughs> you know, should we stay away from somebody? Or uh, one time uh, we sat down on the bus and, and near the front, near the driver, and actually right behind the driver, and there was a, a young, so I had at least two or three seven, eight-ish year olds, and a young man gets on by his facial characteristics, probably on the spectrum, but he sits down, and then he sort of, you know, does some alarming things, uh, and so we're like, oh, okay, we're going to move seats. You know, we didn't have to make a scene or anything, mm-hmm. um, but mm-hmm. we did like, oh, let's recognize that, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, behave appropriately. And and so that's something that, that we definitely, you know, you know, it, it, but that's reality. That's that's dealing that's with real people. life. Um, you know, we saw I, the homeless people in the, you know, in the U.S., that's a big deal. So, uh, you I know, love, to deal with it. Yeah, I love using that example. We did the same thing. When I have kids that are here every day, we would do those things. And part of that was to encourage literacy, right? You know, we're getting on a bus, which bus? Mm -hmm. How do we know where it's going? Then it gets into mapping, right? Where are we going? Let's look at a map, you know, back in the day, no digital maps, but you know, (laughs) yeah. But yeah, we did that too. It's it's very much, you know, uh, embedding it in their desire to go someplace and see something or do something. And then they have this motive to then, oh, exactly. Well, you know, and, and as a responsible adult, it's not like <clears throat> I'm going to tell you all the things. I'm going to say, OK, how should we get there? What what do we know about this bus? What do we you know? And on it goes. And that's the exact definition of higher order thinking, right. because it's what is relevant. So I will always ask parents like, OK, you learn more when you're interested in something. So if you're interested in something, you learn it faster, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you retain it longer, and you can use it in everyday life. Right. That's higher order thinking. If if it's not relevant to your life, then it's nonsense. Right. Right. If it has no relevance, there's no reason to remember it. Yeah. And so that lower order thinking in school of memorization and, and, you know, I'm not saying memorization doesn't work. It right, does. Right. <laughs> I have to memorize things that that are important to me. I will memorize them if they're That's important right. to me, if they have relevance. If yeah, they don't right. have relevance, you might remember it, but it won't have any real uh, relevance. And yeah, the yeah. majority of the time you don't remember it. Right. Mm-hmm. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.